Okay, well, in English, you have something called an alveolar flap or a glottal. Um, well, what happens is that the T and the D will often have this sound. It's like a R sound, R, right? So, for example, the word water will become water. Little will become little. Celebrity will become celebrity, right? So, water, little, celebrity, right? The T will change into the flap. And it'll have a r sound. Um, it's also the natural sound of the D, such as in words in somebody, written, decided, right? You can hear the r there. And that's where the flap comes in when you have a T or a D. The other sound we're going to focus on is a glottal. The sound is like a uh sound, it's like a popping sound, an uh sound. Okay, well, written will become written. Monotonous will become monotonous, right? Mountain will become mountain, and Atlanta will become Atlanta, right? So in reality, in Atlanta, the second T is omitted, and the first T has a glottal. So it'll be, I have written a book. Um, what a monotonous class, monotonous, right? Mountain, Atlanta. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but just so you get the idea. White coffee, hot pepper, get a drunk, that man. It's an uh sound. So we have the r uh sound with the flap and the uh sound with the glottal, right? Um, let me give you some more examples um, with some sentences. This one right here at the top. <clears throat> Can you get me a glass of water? I would really appreciate it. So what happens is get get me a glass of water right instead of get me a glass of water it's get me a glass of water can you get me a glass of water i would really appreciate it right appreciate it instead of appreciate it you would say appreciate it so can you get me a glass of water i would really appreciate it um the next one pick it up pick it up and put it pick it up and put it in the back of the truck right so pick it up and put it in the back of the truck. Also, the TH will also have a flap sound, right? And it, um, the TH will be will be pronounced as a T or as a flap, right? And that's what happens here. Pick it up. Pick it up and put it in the back of the truck. Back of the truck. Put it in the back of the truck. Pick it up and put it. Pick it up and put it in the back of the truck, right? Instead of saying pick it up and put it in the back of the truck, you would say pick it up and put it in the back of the truck. Can you get me a glass of water? I would really appreciate it, right? Before we go to the third one, we have, um, oh, go up. We have this sound right here. We have this word, gotta, which is really just an abbreviation for got to. So you say, I have got to go, will be I gotta go, right? And that's what happens here. It says, I think it's important that we figure out what we have got to do, right? But nobody talks like that, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, not so, not so exaggerated, not so exaggeratedly, right? We usually use glottals and flaps. So I think it's important that we figure out what we gotta do. I think it's important that we figure out what we gotta do. Now, some people will pronounce this with a flap, important, but I grew up pronouncing it with a glottal. So I think it's important that we figure out what we gotta do. What we gotta do. Figure out what we gotta do. I think it's important that we figure out what we gotta do right the next one same thing you're a lot brighter you're a lot brighter than your brother right instead of saying you're a lot brighter than your brother you're a lot brighter than your brother i've got to admit right i have got to admit i've got to admit i've got to admit you're a lot brighter than your brother right also going to will sound like gonna what follows going to must be a verb and then you can have the gonna sound so these are two aspects of connected speech, um, as well as the flap is and the glottal are, right? These are all aspects of connected speech. And the next one, what are you going to do? What are you? Or actually, we. What are we? What are we going to do? What are we going to do on Saturday? What are we going to do on Saturday? Right? Instead of saying, what are we going to do on Saturday? What are we going to do on Saturday? Right? Next one, how do I get to? How do I get to the park? 
how do I get to the park if I don't know how to drive? Instead of saying, how do I get to the park if I don't know how to drive? No. How do I get to the park if I don't know how to drive? So, how do I get to? How do I get to the park? If I don't know how to drive. Right? The next one. You think you think that I don't know how to do that? You think that I don't know how to do that? Right? You think that I don't know how to do that? You think that I don't know how to do that? That I don't know how to do that? Right? Um, the next one has lots of glottals here. You ain't got the right. You ain't got the right to tell me what to do. You ain't got the right to tell me what to do. Right? So there's plenty of glottals in that one. You ain't got the right to tell me what to do. And the next one, there's also lots of glottals. It's not nighttime yet. It's not nighttime yet, but I'm going to go anyway. <clears throat> but I'm going to go anyway. It's not nighttime yet, but I'm going to go anyway. So one last time. Can you get me a glass of water? I would really appreciate it. Pick it up and put it in the back of the truck. I think it's important that we figure out what we got to do. You're a lot brighter than your brother. I've got to admit. What are we going to do on Saturday? How do I get to the park if I don't know how to drive? You think that I don't know how to do that? You ain't got the right to tell me what to do. It's not nighttime yet, but I'm going to go anyway. Right? So you can see here are some sentences with some examples of the flap and the glottal. Right? <clears throat> now, we're going to watch a video. Um, the people are from Northern Ireland. Um, it's an Irish accent. And you're going to hear just a little clip of how they use mostly flaps in this case. Right? So let's have a listen and see how their accent is using the um, the flaps and glottals. And uh, we have been waiting a long time for this to happen. You were yeah. saying, excuse me. No, no, I, I think that there's a lot of people who will be sad about it tonight. But I mean, you have to understand that when the referendum was... Right. There you can hear. And it was like, and uh, we've been waiting a long time for this to happen. You were saying, excuse me. No, uh, I think that there's a lot of people. I think that there's a lot of people who will be sad about it tonight. But I mean, you have to understand that when the referendum was passed, right? So, and uh, we've been waiting a long time for this to happen. You were saying, excuse me? No, uh, I think that there's a lot of people who will be sad about it tonight. But I mean, you have to understand that when the referendum was passed, right? So I think that there is a lot of people who will be sad about it tonight. But I mean, you have to understand that when the referendum was passed, it's very similar to American English, right? And actually the Irish um, had a huge influence on the American accent because there was lots of Irish immigration towards the United States, um, especially to towards the, or to the northern states of the United States. And I think that's one of the factors um, of having so many flaps in some accents of American English. I think the Irish are the people who uh, really contributed to that. So it's interesting to see. We're going to hear another uh, example. Um, if it's, a, it's an Irish person, and I think just an English person, I'm not sure. But the driver is Irish. And the instructor, the test instructor... I think is English, but he's not Irish. And this is, I don't know what part of Ireland this video is from. If it's just normal Ireland or Northern Ireland, or I don't know. But let's have a listen and let's notice how they use the flaps and glottals. What about it? And numerous unauthorized stops, one of which was to get an ice cream. Yeah, you loved that ice cream, didn't you? Mm, let's try to look back to the test center, please. Back to the test center. So I'm not good enough to pass your test, but you want me to drop you back to the test center? Now get out to fuck. <laughs> This is the I don't give a damn where it is. Of nowhere. Get out of the clown. Get out. So I'm going to try to imitate it the best I can um, in an Irish accent and an English accent because one was Irish and one was, I think, English. It's like, what about it? New Miss on us, right? Stops. One of which was to get an ice cream. Yeah, you loved that ice cream, didn't you? Back to the test center, please. Back to the test center. So I'm not good enough to pass your test, but you want me to take you? But you, want me to, but you want me to drop you off at the chest center? Now get out the fuck. <laughs> this is, I don't give a damn where it is. This is the middle of nowhere. You clown, get out. Get out, right? Get out. So <laughs> in the Irish accent, a really in, un, cool accent. I love the Irish accent. What about it? It's like, what about it? Um, yeah, you love that ice cream, didn't you? Back to the chest center. So I'm not good enough to pass your test, but you want me to, but you want me to drop you off at the chest center? Now get out the fuck. <laughs> no, get out the fuck. <laughs> I don't give a damn where it is. You clown, get out. Right? And it's very, actually very similar to the um, to an American accent. And uh, Americans, we would pronounce it in a very similar way. 
I mean, let me just, you see, there's only a slight change, really. And I'm going to say it in my American accent, the part that the Irish guy was speaking. What about it? Um, yeah, you love that ice cream, didn't you? Uh, back to the test center. So I'm not good enough to pass your test, but you want me to drop you off at the test center? Now get out of the fucking car, right? I don't give a damn where it is. You clown, get out, right? So you can see how it's very similar to um, to an American accent, the Irish accent, the way they use the flaps and the glottals. So again, uh, I believe that Irish immigration had a huge influence on the American accent. Um, okay. And next, we're actually going to uh, listen to an English accent. Okay, now we're going to listen to somebody with an English accent. He's actually a boxer, a famous boxer or semi-famous, Daniel Dubois, right? Um, he's an up-and-coming boxer from South London. Um, I know in that in England, even in England, they have different accents, and just like the United States has different accents. But anyway, we're going to hear his English accent, particularly from London. Let's have a listen. Daniel Dubois, all week you've been promising a devastating performance. Is that what you had in mind? Yeah, pretty much. I wanted to go in there and impress him. The, the only way I thought I could do that is by, you know, trying to take him out straight away. But I had to relax a bit, hold back a bit. and. Uh... All right, let's look at the script for that part. Um, I have both the interviewer and Daniel Dubois or whatever. It's like, it's like, Daniel Dubois, all week you've been promising, promising a devastating performance. Is that what you had in mind? Right. And then Daniel Dubois was like, yeah, pretty much. I wanted to go in there and impress. And the only way I thought I could do that was, you know, by trying to take him out straight away. But I had to relax a bit. But I had to relax a bit, hold back a bit. And uh, right. So here you would also probably have a flap there. But anyway, um, let's listen to the second part. Just a little warm up. I'm just getting into it. I'm just getting started. And there's plenty of more to come. Right, there's, there he is again, a very strong English accent, right? It's just a little warm-up. I'm just getting into it. I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started. And there's plenty more to come, right? Right, so one more time. It's just interesting. Yeah, pretty much. I wanted to go in there and impress, and the only way I thought I could do that was, you know, by trying to take him out straight away. But I had to relax a bit, hold back a bit. And uh, it's just a little warm-up. I'm just getting into it. I'm just getting started. And there's plenty more to come. And a lot of T's omitted like in American English, right? And many other accents. But let's let's take a look at how an American would say this part here, um, which is me. So it's kind of similar. Me as an American, I would say, yeah, pretty much. I wanted to go in there and impress. And the only way I thought I could do that was, you know, by trying to take him out straight away. But I had to relax a bit. But I had to relax a bit, hold back a bit. And uh, it's just a little warm up. I'm just getting into it. I'm just getting started, and there's plenty more to come, right? Actually, us Americans sometimes will jump back and forth from the glotto and the flap, like in getting, the word getting. Sometimes it's getting, and sometimes it's getting. So I could also say, it's just a little warm-up. I'm just getting into it. I'm just getting started, and there's plenty more to come. So there are a lot more flaps in the American accent, and I don't know if that comes from Irish immigration or other English accents, or well, I'm not sure. But um, there are a lot of contributors, right? So you can see, you know, that London English accent has more glottals and an American accent will have more flaps. But um, all accents will have both. doesn't matter if you're Canadian, Australian, New Zealand, Car Caribbean accents, right? From the Caribbean, South African. The only accent that really kind of changes where you put the flap is the Scottish accent. And I want to make a video about why Americans, sometimes some Americans don't understand, understand Scottish people because they kind of have their own thing going, which is very interesting as well. Um, but, all right. Um, okay, so what's the point here? Well, we're just practicing connected speech. And here, this, the T seems to be the enemy. We don't like to pronounce the T. Really, the only time we pronounce the T or the D is at the beginning of a sentence or at the beginning of a word, right? But if it's um, a group of words, really the T and the D will be pronounced at the beginning of the sentence. The T, we don't like the T. It seems to be our enemy. So a lot of times it's omitted. Sorry, a lot of times it's omitted, like in the word plenty. 
20, identified, wanted. Wanted, I'm, we're not pronouncing it either. Instead of wanted, it's wanted. Instead of identified, it's identified. A lot of times the D will become a SH, like fracture, right? Fracture. A lot of times the T will become a CH sound, like in don't ya. You know, I want to make a video about that, where you get the, the CH sound with the T, right? And here it's don't ya. Don't you want to go for some coffee? Don't you like my hair? Whatever it is. And here are some other words where you have the glottal, right? Certain, definitely, forgotten. Instead of saying certain or definitely or forgotten, it's certain. Definitely I want to go. I've forgotten all about it. Um, I know a certain person who can help us. Don't you want to go and see who he is? I bet you've wanted to go for a long time. I bet you wanted to go for a long time, right? We'll have plenty of fun, et cetera, et cetera, right? So the T will often change in English. It's not like in Spanish where you always pronounce the T. And this is where the um, situation comes in. Spanish speakers are trying to always pronounce the T in English. The T will, have, will change a lot. Um, this is called connected speech. And um, you don't have to speak this way, but you should be aware that native speakers, we speak this way a lot, depending on the accent, right? Um, and and in the beginning, um, when I became a teacher, many people didn't understand me. And I think one of the major factors was because of the flaps and glottals that I was using. Um, so, hope this video can help you, um, whoever you are, if you're a student, a teacher, or just an overall language freak. Uh, have a good day.